Hi, this is Dr. Todd Snyder. I wanted to take a few minutes to explain how I provisionalize my cosmetic veneer cases utilizing my beadline provisional technique. Now, when someone comes in for veneers, the first thing we're going to do is take some photographs and we're going to take impressions. Now, those impressions, we're going to create models. These diagnostic models are mounted onto an articulator to give us the best precision we can in fabricating this final appearance that the patient's desiring. So with these mounted models, we can then alter the shape of teeth using our diagnostic wax up. Now this wax up, when done precisely, can yield a lot of great information. One of the things it can yield is various types of reduction guides and provisionals. And so in this case, talking about provisionals, the diagnostic wax up, we don't want to damage. We don't want to break it or change it in any way, shape, or form. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate that diagnostic wax up. So using some type of impression technique, whether it's you or the laboratory, uh, I typically use a fast-setting bite registration material, but use something to duplicate your wax up or have the laboratory do it such that you have a stone model. So taking impressions creating diagnostic casts that you can mount on articulators to then have a diagnostic wax up perform. That wax up is then duplicated into a stone model. This is where the magic starts to happen. So now that you have a stone model of that wax up, I want you to grab some type of sharp instrument, whether it be a discoid cleoid, a gold foil knife, you know, interproximal carver, whatever it is, you want some type of sharp instrument that will allow you to describe a half millimeter to one millimeter deep groove at the margins. So every veneer you're doing, you want to go along the margins and you want to scribe a line. Now that, that scribing, you're going to do a little bit into the tissue and a little bit into the tooth at the same time. So as you're scratching this line into this cast, you're going to be taking a little bit of that away, that stone away, creating this indentation. Now, the reason you're doing this is it's going to create a positive, or what I call as a bead line, in the over-impression we're going to take from this model. But before we can do that, we have to be very precise in scribing these lines in. And then I would take a scalpel and just refine the interproximal areas. So maybe just one pass through to clean out any little positive blebs or, or extra cast that maybe is in there that doesn't make it really define. But we're not trying to extend in. We're just trying to make it very precise as far as the appearance of a tooth. If you go too far in between the teeth, uh, you won't get the benefit of having all of the, the provisionals as one piece. You'll have a thin spot, which will make it weak. So we're really doing this just to define the appearance of the tooth by cleaning out any excess. So from here, we're going to inject some type of fast-setting polyvinyl material onto our model, making sure not to capture any bubbles or voids. We're also going to inject that material into our stock tray. We then sandwich these two together and allow them to harden. After it's hardened, you pull this off the model, and what you should find is the following. You should see these little bead lines, these positives in the impression material. And if you've scribed these well, these will create pressure points right where you're planning on putting your finish line or your margin in the patient's mouth. So it is basically going to put a pressure point to cut the provisional material as it's runny, it's making it have pressure so that they can't connect. So you're going to have excess on one side of the bead line, and you're going to have your temporaries on the opposite. And if you've contoured the models well, you should have these nice little triangles that go into the embrasure area. So you have no cleanup in the embrasure spaces or interproximal or at the margins. Now, you, it's certainly possible if you don't press firmly that you might have a very thin layer of flash that's on the tissue. But if you're pressing firmly, it's pretty rare that I'll ever see any flash. Now, where does all the excess go? So when you create this bead line, all the extra uh, bisacryl material is going to rest up on this facial flange. You can see this, this flat area on the facial aspect where I've taken a scalpel and I've trimmed away the excess. I trimmed away the excess all the way down to just on top of that bead line. So all the excess is extruded and it sits here in one big piece. Now you can wipe that away in the gel phase or you can wait till it solidifies and pull it off in one big piece, but this is where it goes. Now, if you wanna make that flange have a slight undulation like interproximally, you can do that. But what I have found is it doesn't really make much difference. The key to the success of this is how well you scribe and how well you position this in the mouth and push firmly to make sure to extrude any excess.
So once you've contoured this to look like I have here in the image, I'll also make a little V-shaped notch right between eight and nine to let me know where the midline is so I can orientate it into the mouth. So I always want to try this into the mouth once ahead of time just to make sure it seats properly and let the patient understand what we're going to be doing and how firmly I'm going to be pushing. And after having done so, I'm then going to retrieve it from the mouth. I'm now going to isolate the area by putting in cotton rolls and drying the teeth off. I don't have to etch. I don't have to bond. I don't have to put anything on the teeth. They are just dry, prepared teeth that the Luxatemp Ultra is going to actually shrink wrap to the teeth. And so as it hardens and solidifies and shrinks slightly, it's going to get into undercuts. It's going to wrap around teeth. And because the line of draw on all these teeth is different, you're going to get mechanical retention compared to traditionally having to use adhesive retention. And so with this technique, it works over many teeth, whether it's two teeth, four teeth, six teeth, eight, uh, you get more strength the more teeth you do. So now having dried the area, we're going to go ahead and grab our provisional material and start to load it into the beadline provisional impression. Now the material that I'm currently using in order to fabricate these beautiful cosmetic veneer temporaries is Luxatemp Ultra from DMG. Now I use it for the following reasons. Number one, it's easy to handle. I like the handling of it. It's rare that I find voids or bubbles or porosities. Uh, it has really good strength properties. So for you know anterior provisionalization where you have some function going on, we want to have some good strength properties. But where I find it to be the most appealing, obviously, is the aesthetics. It has just amazing, outs outstanding aesthetics. And it also has fluorescence, which makes it look very realistic. Right? So much so that some people think it's their final restorations when they're talking to their friends. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see the appearance of this material. Now, in addition, since they're going to be wearing these for a couple of weeks, we want something that's very color stable and has some great durability, which is what the Luxatemp Ultra offers. Now, in looking at this case, you can see we can implement this material to allow us to do provisionals very quickly and easily. You can imagine that if this sets up in about four minutes time, that we have an amazing appearance in minimal amount of time, as well as minimal amount of our personal expenditure. Because if there's very little to no flash, you can be done quickly. So in looking at these, what I want you to see is that the, the model, the diagnostic wax up that was duplicated into a stone model is our architectural blueprint that allows us to make these provisionals quickly and easily. And so your models have to be very accurate. Your wax up needs to be accurate. And therefore your over impression has to be accurate. And if you're doing all of this, you can see that the final restorations, the provisional restorations and the diagnostic wax up should all look pretty much the same. And so we have this ability nowadays to actually mimic things from start to finish. So a patient knows what they're getting. Now I'll also say some of our patients, we can't get them done in just a couple weeks. Sometimes they have to go longer and whether it be crowns or implants, bridges, you know, this same technique works for my implants and bridges and other larger cases. But typically I'm going to want to use a material that has maybe some better durability and longevity. And so for that type of case, I'm now moving away from the Luxatemp Ultra and I'm moving to Luxa Crown, which is also from DMG. And what is the difference? Well, this Luxa Crown is a semi-permanent material for up to five years. It's the same quick and easy use that I had showed you before with my beadline over impression technique, but it's got stronger mechanical properties to withstand the oral environment for longer periods of time under stress and pressure, et cetera. And so having excellent fracture toughness and flexural strength gives it the durability that I want to last a long time. So for my longer provisional cases, I'm using the Luxa Crown. And for my veneers, as you can see, beautiful aesthetics with the Luxa Temp Ultra. So this concludes the discussion on my beadline provisional technique. I hope you find the same success that I do when I'm implementing this technique in my practice.